untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard game to video. Today I'm taking a look at a black, green, ninjas and oil counters deck featuring a ton of new cards from Phyrexia All Will Be One, as well as some old forgotten cards, four copies of Kappa Tech Wrecker, 1-3 that enters a battlefield with a death touch counter on it, can be ninjutsued for one and a green, and when it deals combat damage to a player, we can remove a death touch counter from it to exile an opposing artifact or enchantment. And then a four copies of the Biting Palm Ninja, a 3-3 that enters with a menace counter on it, and when it deals combat damage we can remove a menace counter to make the opponent exile a non-land card from their hand. After taking a look at it. So we've got eight of these ninjas, they both have ninjutsu, but for the most part we're just gonna play them as a regular creature, they enter with their counter on it, and then we've got a few ways to proliferate, with a Drown and Icker being one of them, give a creature minus four minus four until end of turn and proliferate, as well as the Bloated Contaminator, 4-4 four, four Trampler, when it hits the opponent we get to proliferate, and finally two copies of Vraska, which can also proliferate with a zero ability after drawing a card at the cost of one life. So by proliferating we place an additional menace counter on the ninja, or an additional death touch counter on the wrecker, can attack, hit the opponent, remove a counter, taking out a relevant permanent or a card from the opponent's hand, and then still have a counter left over, so we have a death touching wrecker that can maybe get rid of a second permanent, or a ninja that can make the opponent discard twice. And then besides the ninja synergies, we also have some additional counters with the Evolving Adaptive, a 0-0 that enters with an oil counter on it, and then whenever we play a larger creature it will pick up an additional oil counter, getting plus one plus one for each one of them. So the Adaptive can also grow if we proliferate. We've got three copies of a Reckoner Bankbuster, which enters with three charge counters on it, and we can cash in a charge counter for two mana to draw a card, so we can also potentially draw additional cards with a Bankbuster if we keep proliferating. Then at 3 mana we've got 2 copies of Kodama, which also works very nicely with our ninjas, as they both count as modified creatures, thanks to those counters. And then modified creatures have Trample, and whenever one of those hits the opponent, we get to search our library for a basic land and put it on the battlefield tapped, so it can help us ramp. Also very nice to play Kodama after playing a turn 2 Bankbuster, as we'll be able to attack with a 4-4 Trampler, that can also find an additional land if it connects. So Kodama always leads to some fun moments, and also has a reach to protect against opposing flyers. And then topping off our curve, Archfiend as a 6-6 flyer for 4 mana, enters with 4 oil counters on it, and at the beginning of our upkeep we have to remove one of those counters, and then if there's none left we lose the game. Although after playing Archfiend in a few different decks I have yet to lose to that ability, so hopefully today won't change that. And then whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, we also drain the opponent for 2, so great alongside some of our removal spells, which include 3 copies of Cutdown, in addition to 4 copies of Drown and Acre, and at 3 mana I'm also playing 2 copies of Choking Miasma, one of the advantages of being black-green, as a sweeper giving all creatures minus 2 minus 2, shines against a blue-eyed soldier's deck which often goes wide with a bunch of tokens, and if we kick it we can also put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on a creature we control, and none of our creatures besides maybe an adaptive will naturally die to the minus 2 minus 2, so it's often going to be one-sided. And then we also have two copies of Raska, as we mentioned, to keep proliferating with a zero ability. The minus two can turn an opposing creature into a treasure. Just watch out that if you want to use a minus two on an opposing Brutal Cathar, it's not going to give your creature back. So just a side note that I've experienced while testing the deck. And then a minus nine ultimate could maybe poison the opponent to death in combination with a Contaminator, or in combination with an additional proliferate from uh, Drown and Icker, for instance. And then of course by proliferating we can also extend the lifetime from our Archfiend in case we would somehow die to the ability. And then our mana base, a ton of black green dual lands with Glade and Wastes. And then the channel lands can also come in handy, Abandoned Mire and Boseju. And then a 6 forest, 8 swamps. Do want to have enough green to play a turn 1 adaptive on the regular, but also need double black for Miasma and Archfiend. So that's why the mana base is split up the way it is. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, and we're missing black mana. Although, a single black source gets us pretty far, and any third land lets me play Contaminator with double adaptive. So I think I'm still keeping. Now let's see what we're up against. A red-black, and there's our black mana. Okay, so we have a choice. We could even Ninjutsu or Binding Palm, which kind of goes against our general game plan. I think we'll play the Ninja 
as is to grow the adaptives and then if they kill it fine if not then next turn we get to maybe proliferate with drown before getting rid of a card in their hand and then the adaptives are beating down pretty hard in the meantime opponent actually forced to take one out So best case scenario, opponent plays a creature we can kill here, and Fable will do. Now, interestingly, I think we drown and proliferate onto the opponent's Fable. Although I guess we'll have to deal with the Reflection a turn sooner. Upside of letting them get to second chapter is that I get more cards to potentially take away with the Binding Palm. Yeah, I'm crazy, let's go for it. Opponent getting rid of a bank buster. So now hit for six and have a look to take away their best card. Okay, double Hellraiser, I see. So currently still pretty expensive. Uh, Invoke Despair, good one to take away. Edict, I can always sacrifice an adaptive. So Edict is the only card they can actually cast next turn. So maybe I should still take it over Invoke. And then by the time they can cast Invoke, maybe I've hit them again with a ninja to take it away. Opponent passes, another Drown, lovely. So, Contaminator versus Drown, it's gotta be Drown. So Ninja can take away another card. Opponent's at four. And goodbye Invoke Despair. So, opponent still cannot cast her dragon, and then now we can attack. Uh, no point in playing Contaminator since Adaptive's already a 4-4. Okay, Crucible keeps him alive. And, uh, sure, might as well take away another dragon here. Play Contaminator and pass. And then even if they cast the Hellraiser here, we exiled Invoke Despair so they wouldn't be able to cast that one for free, and our opponent packs it in. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and our hand seems fine. Either Wrecker or Bankbuster on two. Depends on the matchup, I guess. Turn one Swamp into Curtains. Well, probably want to get our Bankbuster in play, kind of ensure our card advantage. And then Bankbuster can attack past the Curtains. Opponent with a turn to Misery Shadow. Alright, so Ninja versus Contaminator. I have a backup Contaminator, so if I play Ninja, then uh, there's a chance we can connect with it next turn. So let's try that. Now our opponent can just activate Curtains, leave both creatures back, and then we're hoping to draw removal. Alright, Liliana, good answer to the ninja here. This is my and pretty good card against us in general, since we're playing some pretty expensive creatures, not a lot of 1-drops. Which is what you want against Liliana. Now that being said, we can play Contaminator, crew Bankbuster. As opposed to Double Wrecker, which doesn't crew it, force them to chump with the Curtains. And then next turn I can play a couple Wreckers. Opponent lets Liliana go. There might be another one in our future. Go for the throat, kills Contaminator. Exiling it in the process. And an evolved Sleeper. Frasca we cannot play just yet. So we could play a Wrecker, draw with a Bankbuster, or Contaminator, crew and attack for four. But I feel like I want to start hitting my land drops. So let's just go for a Bankbuster activation. And then we can still maybe play Contaminator afterwards. Another Vraska. It's a bit of a clunky draw here. Opponent can level up Sleeper. At least a Wrecker threatens to trade for a large Shadow.
5 manas invoke the spare territory, which is going to be quite painful too here. Opponent activates curtains. Well, hoping they take something away so I can draw land. They may just leave everything as is. All right, takes Contaminator. We picked up a waste. Vraska's not the best on this board when our opponent has three creatures that can pressure it. So I'm not sure yet if we're gonna run it out next turn. Revealing Eye hits for three, and happy to trade a Wrecker for Shadow. Could imply that our opponent has their own Bankbuster they want to play. Alright, another one. So this turn... If I play Vraska, can turn Revealing Eye into a treasure, and then Sleeper can level up end of turn, take out Vraska. I think I prefer draw with Bankbuster, play another Wrecker. Maybe pick up a one drop as well. Drown could kill Sleeper before it gets out of hand. Could still cast it next turn, and we may prefer taking out the Revealing Eye. So I'll go with the Wrecker. Definitely trade if I get the chance. So it looks like they're going to start leveling the Sleeper up to a 4-4. So it would still die to Drown. Alright, it's going to be an Adversary instead. Making some zombie tokens. Nope, just a 2-3. So interestingly, I could decide to cash in the Bankbuster before drowning, so I get my pilot token, which can crew the other Bankbuster. Or we can drown to get the most value out of our Bankbusters. In case the game goes pretty long. Yeah, I could see that being fine. Kill Sleeper. And then... Proliferate everywhere and pass. Opponent had an Abandoned Mire. Can maybe get back Liliana. So that kills Wrecker. And then we take five. Okay, so might regret proliferating onto the Bankbuster now. So that happens. Take five. And then hope to draw some more cheap plays we can make. Could finish off Liliana no matter what, and a Miasma. So yeah, if I cash in the final count from Bankbuster, we can crew the other one, finish off Liliana. Drown kills Revealing Eye, and then we should be in okay shape. Adaptive we can also run out before drowning to pick up an extra counter. Let's give this a try. Now, we wouldn't have to necessarily kill Liliana here, since Point would make us discard. We've got plenty of cards to work with. So I could have just stayed back and drawn with the Bankbuster. Forcing an Infernal Grasp is fine. And then now we have double Vraska to leverage still. Unlicensed Hearse is going to get pretty large in a second. And one Vraska can go. So opponent may hang back with Adversary to protect Liliana, but then Vraska can deal with Adversary. And a Wrecker can now deal with a Hearse as well. I think Vraska for starters take out Adversary. And then we can deal with a Hearse next turn. Okay. And then I could crew Bankbuster as well, hit for four, or we can leave it back as a blocker for Vraska, which I think I prefer. Still terrified of an Invoke Despair top deck, which could just end the game here. So that's a reason not to lose any life to Vraska. Okay, Adversary this time will be kicked for sure. 
Although Miasman deals with all the tutus. Alright, so big turn coming up. Vraska can once again minus two on adversary. They may crew hers in response. And then it's still only going to be a 2-2, two -two, although it can threaten to grow after blocking. Yeah, I think we'll be fine with that. Opponent did not crew in response. So, still just going to attack with Bankbuster. Question is whether I want to attack with both of my creatures to guarantee the ninjutsu working out. I think I just attack with Bankbuster. I doubt our opponent's gonna trade for hers when we're at five. Okay. And then we get to pick up our Bankbuster again to reset its counters, which is pretty fun. And our opponent concedes. Awesome. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. Our hand's not actually all that bad since Ninja plays well with removal to kind of clear a path for it. So just gotta hope we're up against a creature deck where cut down and drown is useful. Turn one planes officer. Yep, that counts. And a wrecker also not a bad blocker. So I'm probably fine cutting down the officer, which is also a late game card draw engine. If our opponent plays Thalia here, I wouldn't be able to kill it anyway. So may as well. No turn to play. Play Wrecker and hope to draw lands next turn. Opponent may have some artifact creatures for the Wrecker to take out. Ooh, Miasma is going to be very good once we get the chance to cast it. For now, I guess we have to drown the Veteran. And then we may as well attack for one. Alright, so we're running out of removal, but Miasma is still potentially a catch-up mechanism if we fall too far behind. Shield of Argive, that's the scary one. So now if they have a Brutal Cathar, Exile Wrecker, get a free attack in. But all I can do is play a ninja. I guess I could have also tried to ninjutsu my ninja and take away a Brutal Cathar, but then Shield gets to attack for free. So that doesn't really solve our problem. And Miasma is still a way to clear all the 1-1s, one so it's not the end of the world. Okay, Poon goes for the Death Toucher, presumably. Nope, goes for Ninja. So happy to trade Wrecker for Shield. Okay. Now the question is, do I Miasma now or wait? If her opponent has a Lord, Miasma would still clear the board. If her opponent has Veteran, then they could put Cathar out of range from Miasma. They could easily have another Brutal Cathar, in which case Miasma is going to be quite effective. So, Contaminator versus Ninja. I think I like Ninja, since that way we also incentivize them to play a Lord to pump the team so Cathar can attack past it. And opponent still has a few cards in hand, so we can hope to take one away before they empty it. No attacks. Turns to Knight, which I guess is a way to play around Miasma. So now they can also block our Ninja. Unless we Miasma... And then they would only have a 1-1 one, one first strike back. Yeah, I guess we just play Contaminator and pass. And then our opponent may want to cast two spells to transform back to daytime, exile another creature. And then we'll set up our Miasma. Would love to hit a few more land drops. Okay. Thali has a problem since that prevents us from casting Miasma in the first place. So now Brute transforms back. At least we can still cut down the officer. So Contaminator about to get exiled, unless we want to cut down Brutal Cathar. I think officer is the bigger problem, so we'll let that happen. And then land for Miasma would also be quite effective. Since that would leave our opponents with uh, without any blockers for Ninja, which can then connect. 
and they'll be forced to draw with Officer before we hit them with Ninja, so we can have a look. Could also play an Archfiend first, that feels a bit greedy. Although it would drain them for quite a bit once we Miasma the turn after. But there's a lot of ways that could go wrong. Another Brutal Cathar. Opponent could potentially play multiple Lords. Yeah, let's just do this now. Get our two creatures back. And then Ninja gets to take one of three cards. Okay, we've got another officer which has to go here. Although they still have one to go with reinforcements and Thalia. Although Cutdown can handle it. Point's gonna main phase draw in case they find another spell they can cast. Although, if they draw something expensive, the ninja might threaten to take it away. Still at 18 at least. Okay. So now what? Can play Archfiends, or we can just deal with the uh, officer before it gets out of hand. And then the ninja can kind of force a trade for multiple soldiers. That seems fine by me. And then hopefully they draw a non-land card that Ninja can take away. Could also Ninjutsu the Wrecker. To kind of reset the Biting Palm. So let's attack all out. And then... Yeah, Ninjutsu Wrecker kills a Soldier token. And our opponent concedes. Alright, I'll take it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. And it's pretty nice. Would have been much better on the play, but uh, still adaptive into Wrecker. Leaves us with two modified creatures. Up against Moderat. Okay, so... Drawing a land's not ideal. Depends whether our opponent has a lot of removal here, whether this hand works out. Best case scenario, opponent presents Mechanized Warfare that the Wrecker can take out at some point. For now, double Phoenix Chick. Considering their next play and the festivities to just deal with the Adaptive now, that's too bad. We'll hang on to Drown, just play a Wrecker. And then maybe get Kodama going. Take two, so no Warfare this turn. At least Kodama blocks the Phoenix Chick. So they most likely have a Lightning Strike in hand. What's the alternative? Just drown a Phoenix Chick, attack for one. That doesn't seem very good. Hoping they just have a play with Fire in hand instead. And do we get to hit with a Wrecker? Would get us a land. Okay. Can get another swamp, perhaps, since we may plan to channel Abandoned Mire. So that worked out. Do we see a play with fire upstairs, end of turn? Nope, Lightning Strike Kodama, so they kind of missed the interaction with the Wrecker. Gave us a free land. We are at 12, and Akumano puts us to 11. They probably have a couple more burn spells in hand, given how they've been playing. Archfiend was a great draw, and then now the Wrecker can take out Kumano as well. So we found a target for it. Archfiend blocks Phoenix Chick pretty well too. So that was one of our better draws. All right, let's see our opponent's response. If our opponent's still attacking, they may have both Play With Fire and Lightning Strike in hand. 
but opponent passes. And I imagine it's still better to attack with Archfiend. Can channel Abandoned Mire, see if we pick up something useful that we can still play here. At the very least, can get back Adaptive or Kodama. Another Wrecker. Well, Kodama is a Reach creature that will also give Trample to our modified creatures. So even though I can play Adaptive right now, Kodama may be better. Also wouldn't be surprised if her opponent has another end of festivities in hand, which is not doing much. And then we'll smash for at least six. Could keep a wrecker back to maybe block some haste creatures like Swiss Spear. And then I'll wait on Drown. Although if her opponent has, let's say, five points of burn in hand, two more from Phoenix Chick. I think we're still alive, but could certainly die to a combination of burn spells. Okay, play with fire. Down to nine. Can still use Poseidon on a mechanized warfare if that shows up. For now, take two down to seven. They may have seven points of burn in hand, although they wouldn't be able to deploy them all. So, it's going to be a close one. Vraska, we don't really want to lose life to the zero ability. So, Kodama it is. Attack with Archfiends and Wrecker can get in there now too. And then... It may be correct to drown. Now we can Boseju for one mana as we control a legendary to maybe take out a warfare. So, by drowning a Phoenix Chick, we can block the other one. So, yeah, if our opponent has, like, double Lightning Strike, play with Fire in hand, we could still be dead. Play with Fire, down to five. Play with Fire, down to three. All right, do they have the Lightning Strike 2 here? Gonna regret not killing the Phoenix Chick a turn sooner with a Drown. Opponent Bottoms, that's promising at least. Impulse to go digging, finding a land Impulse, okay. We're still in it. If our opponent casts Impulse, they're dead. So the only card that kills us is a Lightning Strike, which they couldn't find. Awesome. Phoenix Chick attacks. Opponent loses two. And an all-out attack will do it. Alright, very close one here against Monorette. Came down to the last top deck. Okay, we're on the play. Missing green mana for turn one adaptive. Can we still keep? I don't think so. This is probably better. Adaptive into either Bangbuster or Wrecker. And then Archfiend on four. Adaptive would grow with a Wrecker. Bangbuster gives us a three mana play. So maybe still prefer Bangbuster here. And then we're gonna need Archfiend as a finisher. Hope to pick up some removal, some three mana creatures. Okay. So next turn we can draw and cut down. Opponent on Jund. Doesn't seem like Miasma is going to be all that great here, but you never know. And then I'll draw with Bank Buster now in case I pick up another adaptive. Gonna be Fable on three. Can take that out. And curve into our Archfiends. Attack with Bankbuster. So we're applying a good bit of pressure. Quick 
question is, can our opponent answer Archfiend? And then Miasma we can now kick, putting a counter on the Adaptive to save it. Opponent discarding a Titan, so reanimate our deck. And yeah, they could already bring it back next turn, potentially even on turn 4. It's gonna be a Shield Roots, that resolves. And Kodama is pretty nice. So if I play Kodama, I'm probably still just attacking with Archfiends. Since we could have a 3 3 adaptive 4 4 Bangbuster, putting blocks Bangbuster takes 9. Yeah, that's not good enough. So yeah, let's just go with Kodama. Attack with Archfiends, and then most likely draw with a Bangbuster as well. But want to thin out the deck of a land first. Alright, let's see if our opponent can bring back their Titan of Industry here. They can, with the Cruelty. Okay, that's gonna be tough. Miasma kills Reflection, but facing Titan and Shieldreds is gonna be very difficult to overcome. Opponents could go after Bankbuster, which can still draw on the way out, but nope, opponent goes for Shield Counter. And 5 life. Hopefully the shield counter goes on Reflection, but our opponent goes for shield on Titan. Since Reflection we still could have taken out with a Miasma. So end of turn, we'll draw. So now Miasma doesn't really accomplish anything besides killing Reflection. Since we would shrink down both Archfiend and Titan at the same time. Now that being said, if I attack with Archfiends and with some ground creatures, they may block with Shieldred, which we can then finish off. So maybe that's still worth going for. Don't think they'll be blocking with Reflection, but I'm hoping Shieldred blocks so we can finish it off. Okay, opponent actually not blocking Archfiend could work out for us. Opponent takes six. And then now a kicked Miasma. We'll finish off Shieldreds and Reflection. Drain for four, opponent's at three. And we can still draw with a Bankbuster end of turn. So that worked out surprisingly well. Another Fable is fine. So now Archfiend will force a trade for Titan, in addition to being able to crew Bankbuster. Last counter on Archfiend, and cut down kills the Shaman, so yeah, that should do it if there's no additional interaction. Opponent was maybe hoping to kill us by having us remove the last counter from Archfiends, which, uh, yeah, almost worked out, but not quite. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Missing green mana, but can definitely make this work for a while without green. Let's see what we're up against. Hopefully we're facing a creature deck where we can actually use our spot removal. Okay, green-white. Bodes well for our removal. And a Skrelf's Hive, on the other hand, I don't love seeing. Okay, drawing two green cards without a forest is not the best sequence here. Hopefully our ninja gets to connect. Okay, so now we get to have a decent turn adaptive into... A drown lets us proliferate onto the ninja. And then we can take away a card and still maybe do it next turn. Well, let's see what they're working with. Another hive and another contaminator. I think contaminator has to go. And then keep the cut down for duelists. So 
the opponent's gonna empty their hands. Don't know if we need to cut down the duelist necessarily, since they won't be able to block ninja. And there's higher priority targets maybe later, like Skrelv itself at one mana. And I don't think I'm gonna struggle to keep up a cut down. Okay, so we'll play our own Contaminator. Grow Adaptive. And then I should probably just cash in the last counter on our ninja while we can. Adaptive can also attack. Get them low to kind of punish the double hive. And our opponent still had a chorus in hand. Okay, so ninja got two cards, feels good. Opponent falls to seven, and we've got a lethal in play. Assuming they didn't top deck anything contaminator, that might keep them alive, although let's see. Should still get there once we cut down the duelist. Since they'll take at least six, and then two more from Hive. And an Archfiend. Not a bad top deck either. Okay, started off kind of sketchy, but got to see our Binding Palm in action. Sniping two important cards. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Hand has potential. Turn to Leaning Bankbuster, hit for 4 once we play Contaminator, and then Archfiend to keep up the pressure. Cutdown could be useful against a creature deck. Yep, still go for Bankbuster. Opponent on a more controlling white build with a farmhand, so there's going to be plenty of things for Wrecker to take out. Contaminator for now can at least survive a uh, laden arm since they only have the one planes in play. Get in for four. And then next turn probably go for Archfiend. Now our opponents will have Wandering Emperor on four. Loran taking out Bangbuster also quite good. Still gonna play Archfiend and Smash. There's a tiny chance our opponent will uh, make a mistake with uh, Wandering Emperor exiling a tapped creature. If they wait until after blocks, we can potentially ninjutsu our creature. And late on arms deals with our contaminator, so at least we don't have to worry about an emperor. So Archfiend gets one more attack in at least. And with cut down we can drain for two more thanks to the last ability. Another farm hands. But yeah. Don't have much going on besides Archfiend, so if they can answer it next turn, we could still be in trouble. Miasma would be awesome, since we can hit for six, Miasma second main. And finish them off. It's gonna be an adaptive. Okay, adaptive. Plus wrecker. Keep up cut down. And uh, that's about it. Hope there's no wandering emperor. We both get to draw. I guess that's a good thing. It means they don't necessarily have the answers in hand. Okay, another lay down arms. So we want to cut down now. Probably killing Loram. As it can maybe trade for one of our creatures better. And then a Binding Palm we can potentially ninjutsu next turn. Although with our opponent at 4, they're kind of in chum block mode. Another Loran. Fair enough. And another Archfiend, so now play Archfiend, attack with both. And then they're not allowed to trade off for both of my creatures. So now they're gonna have to take one from the Wrecker and chump Adaptive. 
with a single creature. Since if they block the Wrecker, Archfiend would trigger twice. This is also not going to work, since now Archfiend will just deal six. So yeah, the only play that keeps him alive is Chump Adaptive, take one. Which will leave them at one life. And our opponent explodes, I guess they can figure it out. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Can we live the dream of Bankbuster into Kodama? Let's find out. Facing turn one Fuselings, an aggressive oil counter deck. Curious to see how our opponent approached it. Beast Caller makes sense. Still gonna go for Bankbuster into Kodama since the upside is so high. And a Scrap Gorger we can still attack into. Okay. So we're taking quite a beating here, but hopefully next turn, thanks to the extra lands, we can pull ahead. Grab a Swamp. Loyal Bodyguard, Grows Beast Caller, and another Scribe Gorger. So our opponent's down to one card in hand. Take six. Now, unfortunately, if we try to drown the bodyguard, they can sack in a response and we don't get to proliferate. So that's something to keep in mind. I could drown the Beast Caller and then cut it down, although they still get to move three counters, so that's not ideal. So probably play Ninja, which can crew Bankbuster, and then... Bangbuster attacks, keeping Kodama back. And then I can play a Wrecker on defense as well as a Death Toucher. If they block with double Scrap Gorger to prevent us from searching, I could cut one down to still trample over. Opponent takes it. No need to Ninjutsu. And yeah, I think we need to play a Wrecker on defense. Get another Swamp. Alright, we've got two blockers at 9 life. We'll see if that's enough. Unlikely to take anything away with a Ninja. Bloated Contaminator we can take out with Drown. Now, of course, they can move the counters from Beast Caller onto Contaminator, and then we're gonna struggle to deal with it. But maybe they'll diversify. So, I think we accept definitely that trade. And I should probably just trade for Bodyguard. We got our value from Kodama. Fuseling's gonna grow a bit. Alright, they're gonna split it up. So now Drown's not going to be enough to take out Contaminator. Although Drown plus Cut Down might get there. So 5-5 five, five Contaminator. And opponent plays out their land, so don't need to try and hit them with a Ninja. Probably just Drown plus Cut Down the Contaminator after playing a Bank Buster, so we get additional counters. And then Ninja or Bankbuster can trade for Fuseling. And then we've got a lot of card advantage coming up with double Bankbuster. So don't hate my spots, but at 9 life can't feel too comfortable. The Scrap Gorgers have plenty of things to exile to eventually grow into a threat as well. Okay. Put on top deck to an adaptive. Could be worse. And I imagine Fuseling's gonna attack. And then I probably just trade for a Bankbuster instead of a Ninja. Okay, Ponon stays back. Another Ninja. And a Drown. Perfect. So play Ninja and Drown. 
Kill Fusling. And we've got a lot of extra cards to draw with uh, Bank Busters now. No attacks. Try and leverage our card advantage. And I'm not sure how high the opponent's curve goes, if they're playing some 7 drops. Or if we at most can expect maybe a Planeswalker like Luca to show up. And our opponent concedes, awesome! Get to a level up here as well. So yeah, pretty happy with how this black-green oily ninjas performed, beating lots of aggressive decks in the format like Monorads and Blue-White Soldiers. Now if we're up against some more controlling strategies that have a lot of removal for creatures, then we're going to be in a bit of trouble since we have a few removal spells ourselves with uh, Drown and Cutdown that's not going to have a lot of targets. So those matchups are going to be tough, so I wouldn't necessarily recommend this as your first choice to go up the ranked ladder, but if you just want to have some fun and uh, maybe play some ninjas that have been forgotten over time, then this may be the deck for you. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day! I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.